of feel like some sort of budget ass news reporter here. I need some papers to shuffle or something. Anyway, hey guys, Jimmy here, and welcome back to another video where I get to be in the house. I'm house trained, finally. But the reason why I'm back in the house and also in this rather fetching cardigan is because I am making a follow up video. The other day I made a video on my trusty Sierra T Racer wheel, which turned out to not really work very well. And that's because unknown to me and also not featured anywhere in any sort of documentation, I had to press a button on the front of the steering wheel to change the input from digital to analog. That bastard, right there. And because I found that out after, of course, the video went live, I thought it'd be a good idea to revisit our T-Racer and give it a chance to fully live up to its potential as Amazon's cheapest steering wheel. This is why I don't record up here very often. But just before we get into discovering the true depth and ability of our glorious Sierra T Racer Will, YouTube are currently running a special offer on channel memberships, which is if you go down below and hit the join button, in certain countries, channel memberships are now free for a month. And as the creator, I still get the full amount I would usually get if you were joining at a normal period. So if you want to help out the channel by effectively just clicking a button, then that'd be very much appreciated. If not, there's no worries, of course, but it's there and you know, man's got to eat. Right, so I've pressed the magic mode button. You can barely see it, but a very dim light comes on the wheel. And now we're going to go to the uh, the settings here, the controls, and I'm going to show you the magic. Check it out, look. Oh my word, we have analog input. We have done it, ladies and gentlemen. Would you look at that? Look at that input. Okay, the brake sometimes comes on on its own, but that's still progress. Nice. So bad start, the um, the game crashed. Maybe it can't handle the true potential of this T-Racer wheel. Oh, it's gonna be a long day, isn't it? Oh! Okay, that was half an hour for me of trying to get this to work. TLDR, I had to turn the force feedback off in the game because it was trying to detect this as a force feedback controller and the game was just having none of it and just crashed every time I tried going. This is the first time I've got to the screen. The things you don't see, ladies and gents. The, the things that make these videos take second ages. So now that I've got this glorious wheel working in its full analog mode, I'm gonna try and beat my lap time that I uh, did last time in the last video around Brands Hatch Indy. 105.6 to beat on the wheel. And then we'll try something a little bit faster, a little bit spicier. So it's so weird actually having some sort of movement in the wheel that isn't just extreme dead or extreme not dead. I was having some sort of throttle input. You can see in the bottom right hand corner there, there are my inputs. They're looking a little bit more uh, like inputs today. I'm being so careful the brake here because it's so uh, so soft to the touch. Okay so let's get ready to start our lap. This is literally my first lap out of the pits so it might be terrible. The wheel is kind of suction the cup to the table. I say kind of it's moving as I turn the wheel. Jesus. Well, that's a good start. All right, Lego. Well, I, I feel like I shouldn't be driving a car that you have to sort of um, drive on the limit. I say on the limit. You have to, this car is fast to slide. It's not really ideal for this sort of wheel, but so 105.6 to beat. Let's see if we can do it. Oh no, that's a line into T1. Don't at me. I'm just trying to slow it down without murdering it. I'm gripping. I know you, you can't really get the uh, the feel of it, but I'm gripping this wheel so tightly right now. I'm so nervous. That's it's going to slide. Come on. Easy now. I haven't got the um, the time up from the last session, so I don't, I don't know if I'm up or down a lot right now on lap time, but I'm imagining that we are very quickly going to beat it. Probably should have carried four through there. This is the problem corner here. I'm going to slow down nice and early. Let's use third gear. I'll let it roll into the corner. There you go. And then throttle out. 105.6 to beat. I think it was a 102 to beat for the keyboard time. Looks like we should just about beat it. There you go, one minute point nine straight away. So we've gained pretty much five seconds there just by turning the analog on. So we're making some good progress already. But I've done this car on track already. Let's try something a little bit more intense, shall we? For our t race. So something that matches the, uh, the unit that is this wheel, I think. So then, here's something a little bit faster. A <laughs> Beach and F1 car. Um, I thought I'd just jump in at the deep end, drive the cars that I would usually drive uh, with a normal wheel, but on our trusty uh, 
T-Racer, see if we can get the most out of it. Uh, and just for, you know, the sake of showing you the lack of throttle travel and all that, all the assists are off. This car usually, and in real life, has traction control. We haven't got that, so I've got to be easy on that uh, two millimeter travel throttle, otherwise I'm going to end up spinning it and putting it into some sort of wall. So let's be nice and careful, shall we? We're at Brands Hatch GP uh, this time, a bit longer, give us uh, a chance to stretch its legs a little bit. And hopefully we'll be able to show you the full potential of this bad boy. Let's go. Oh, Jesus. Traction control definitely off. <laughs> Easy. And as is ABS, so I've got to be careful on that. Oh! The caution flag is <laughs> well, I didn't last very long. Really doesn't help that the pedals are moving constantly. I know you guys can't see that, but like it's so hard to keep them in any sort of place because of my big old slippers that I'm using right now. There you go, nice and soft. Now we get to unleash the V10. The pedals are at an angle right now because apparently that's how I drive. I'm being so cautious on the throttle. You can see in the bottom right there my, uh, my imp. <laughs> what we should do, someone mentioned this like in the, uh, on the last video, is in the virtual GP we get all the drivers to drive using this wheel. That would really liven things up. Well, we've nearly got around. I want to try and do all that without having a massive crash, though, or a spin. It's very hard to uh, do the braking required for this car, too, with an initial big hit, and then you let off the brakes at the end to... There you go. Through T1, softly. Softly. I said softly, Jimmy, not again! So, you're seeing some of the issue I'm having here. It's getting the car slowed down and then turning in aggressively. Oh, I'm not working too well. Oh my god, I actually caught some oversteer. What is this life? I actually think that you could get used to driving this and be semi-decent. This is uh, completely changes my outlook on this wheel, being able to actually use it like this. Because whilst there is there is um, vibration on the wheel, but I have to turn that off, otherwise the game doesn't run. Uh, so I guess, I, did, <laughs> I guess there's no vibration then. Um, while there is no force feedback or anything like that, you get an idea. You can... Be smooth. Last try, you figure out how much brake to put in. You start building up muscle memory as you would with any other wheel. And really, I think you could be just as fast. No! Oh! Ignore that. Didn't happen. Okay. Oh, fuck it out! But the, the, the wheel is moving. <laughs> These suction cups kind of suck. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Game mini killed me for terrible pun. <laughs> That's fair enough. If I can get through droids, I reckon I can make a lap round here. I reckon it's possible. Whoa! Okay. I'm now missing parts of my car. I'm really gonna do my best to not die this time. He says, like he said every other time so far. Don't spin it. God, this thing is fast. Good missile in a straight line, as they all were, of course. Gonna break it. I'm gonna be really slow through droids just to get through it. Cause look. All i got to do is go through it like I have like a million seconds. Oh, my wrist is already really aching because I'm trying to hold the wheel like as steady as possible. Because there's no force feedback, so I'm going to just try to make sure that I'm very precise to where my movements are. That was almost good through there. Almost. You know what? That wasn't terrible. What time was that? 110? 111? I mean, not fantastic, but... You know, I could... Definitely start building on it. Oh, never mind. We're back, back to, back to business as usual. <laughs> Come on now. Let's get through here properly. Still being super easy on the inputs, but you can see how the time would come. You really could. Oh God. Trying my best now to actually do a lap that's quick or quicker. Two seconds up, come on. No! What a wait! Hey, you know what? That's alright. 
That's okay. I think my opinion on this wheel has changed slightly. I've grown fond of it now. It is breaking my wrist slightly going around here. But 108 in a V10F1 car with no assists, no force feedback or anything. That isn't terrible for Brown Touch. That isn't the worst time in the world. So go on, girl. Go on, T-Racer. So after struggling to get this thing working for the last however long it was, we finally got to take it around the circuit. And I gotta say, my view on it has changed slightly. Whilst it is still very plastic and doesn't really work properly, um, the steering wheel is offset, for example, and there are no manuals to tell you how to get this thing working in the game. I have to just go Googling and trying random things out to get it to work. So when it did work, it was okay. It was fine. And you saw towards the end, I was starting to pick up some sort of speed with it. Of course, there's not really any feeling there. I wouldn't really want to race to this wheel still. But for somebody who is not wanting to really spend any money and isn't bothered about force feedback and all the bells and whistles, just want to drive on their own, then I could almost see myself recommending this wheel. I don't know, man. I don't know. I think the glory of the T-Race has won me over. Our new glorious leader, a 17 pound wheel from Amazon. But guys, if you enjoyed the video, as always, I'd appreciate if you leave a like feel free to subscribe as well and hit that uh, bell notification icon i think the next test for the t racer is to take it around uh, a certain circuit a certain circuit that has featured a lot on this channel let me know in the comments if you guys want to see that anyway i'm going to go now and put the t racer to rest take care have an awesome day i'll see you all next time